I used to call myself a writer. You know, before everything went to shit. And now all I do is complain about pointless shit and take care of my mom. Well, how's she been recently? She's fine. I mean, same as before. She's gonna be able to eat solid foods by next month, so that's great. Sounds like stuff is starting to come back together. Yeah. It's weird, though. You know, my dad seems like happier now than when she was healthy. They were fighting a lot before she got sick. About? Me, money, everything. Now that mom's sick and dad's taking care of her, he's really comforting around her. We already sold the other house, so we don't have to worry about money. And you know, the more I think of it, the more I think it would just be better if she stayed sick. Sounds like you got a lot to write about there, Charlie. Get over here. Everything's gonna be okay. Yeah, I guess. Listen, you can do anything you set your mind to. Having read what you've written, you're gonna be just fine. Thanks. Anytime. See you next week. Say hi to Rachel for me. Did you say something, Charlie? Sid wanted me to go out to the pier with him, but that was the first place that George and I really connected, and he's just been pissing me hold, off. Hold, hold, slow down. Hold. Slow down. What happened with George? Broke up with him to be with Sid. And who is Dean? I was hooking up with Dean after Paul. <clears throat> Nicole, have you ever considered making some time for yourself? No, not really. Besides, I couldn't break Dean's heart like that. You mean Sid? Exactly. He just gets me, you know? You attach yourself to guys to feel better about yourself. You know that, right? Excuse me? As a therapist. As I... my therapist, you should listen to me and shut up until I tell you to talk. When was the last time you didn't have a boyfriend, huh? I don't know, like middle school, is it? And, and, and... You don't see anything wrong with that. No problem with What's that. What's your problem with me I being don't. happy? That. I'm not attacking your happiness to, by saying you need some more time. Nicole, unless, unless you want to be emotionally dependent and fucked I'm up. I'm actually going to go. You still have 15 minutes left. Or Stop. Whore. Stop. Whore. I'm really not in the mood for this. You're my whore. <sighs> Cut the shit. You owned a room with me for an hour. I'm the only person that matters. It's not like you talked to me if I didn't pay you. Does she have to pay you? Prostitutes don't go to Prostitutes school. get paid less. Not if you're in Vegas, trust me. She's a cunt. Oh, yeah? What'd she do? Doesn't let me skip. Oh, what a bitch. Sally, how was your brother's going away party? You don't care! Yeah, it's like a prostitute, right? Well, you're certainly fixated on this. Uh, uh, care for me, John. Tell me I'm the only one. Like Rachel. Oh. I love Rachel! You have no idea how much I care for every little screwhead that comes in here. Everyone! Hello. 
I'm Dr. Lewis. And your name is? Well, before we get to know each other, it's important that we establish some rules and some understanding between us. First is, I'm not allowed to say anything that we talk about in, in this room. Is it? Okay. You don't like to talk much, do you? How's school? You like your classes and your teachers? Things are okay at home? Your parents? Your brothers and sisters? Is somebody hurting you? I can't help you if you don't talk to me. Nicole still doesn't get it. I mean, she's all pissed off at me because I finally spoke up to her like, like I knew I should have. Like, like you told me I should stick up for myself, and I did. I stuck up for myself. And Randy, well, Randy is, is handling his brother's deployment like he handles everything else by being the most annoying little umbop looking beady eyed. Did you ever see a Christmas story? John, you know this is your session, not your patients. Yeah, I know, I know. Rachel's been cheating on me. Rachel? Can you really call that cheating? I don't know. She, she doesn't return any of my phone calls and I mean, she never broke up with me in the first place. We had such a good time. I remember after, uh, after dinner, she looked up at me and she, she had a really nice time. Cab was pulling up. I couldn't help myself. We kissed. I opened the door for her and make sure she's inside. She sort of winks at me as she leaves. I really thought that was a special night for us. John. She doesn't have to break up with you if she doesn't want to see you again after one date. Well, it's rude. It's rude. And now she's parading around with this homunculus mongoloid all tattooed up and I'm telling you, Nicole's John, gonna... have you ever considered that you use your own patience to avoid your own problems? Let me ask you something. Do you think we're emotional prostitutes? Uh, what makes you say that? Randy, the farkas looking kid, asked me that the other day. Ah, my point exactly. What? What is? The second we get somewhere, you change the topic to your own patience. You know, look, John, maybe it's time that we give up on Rachel. Why would you say that? Why do you think I might say that? I love her. You need to start facing your own issues and not put them on your patients. What? 
it's nice to care about your patients, but you can't really help them until you begin helping yourself. Same time next week. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Rick. The number you have reached has been disconnected or is no longer...